Here's what's coming up in the Category 5.TV newsroom. Toshiba shuts the lid on laptops after 35 years. The discovery of salt bound to water molecules on Ceres, the largest asteroid in the solar system, suggests that there may be an ocean lurking beneath the Akator crater. A convincing phishing scam is targeting, targeting cPanel users with a fake security advisory. A teenager has spent nearly $20,000 in Twitch donations with their mother's debit card. And Google is creating a worldwide Android phone-powered earthquake alert system. Stick around, the full details and this week's Crypto Corner are coming up. This is the Category 5.TV Newsroom, covering the week's top tech stories with a slight Linux bias. From the newsroom, I'm Becca Ferguson. It's official, Japanese giant Toshiba has sold its final stake in the personal computer maker Dynabook, which means the firm no longer has a connection with making PCs or laptops. Sharp bought 80% of Toshiba's personal computing arm in 2018 for $36 million, 27 million pounds, and has now bought the remaining shares, Toshiba said in a statement. Toshiba's first laptop, the T1100, the T1100, launched in 1985. It weighed four kilograms and worked with three and a half inch floppy disks. According to the Toshiba Science Museum website, it was launched only in Europe at first and had an annual sales target of just 10,000 units. In the year 2011, Toshiba sold more than 17 million PCs, but my, how times have changed. By 2017, this had fallen to just 1.9 million. In 2016, it had ceased making consumer laptops for the European market, focusing only on hardware for businesses. Recent years have been difficult for the conglomerate. In 2015, the firm posted a full-year loss of $318 million. That same year, its president and vice president resigned after an independent panel found the company had overstated its profits for the previous six years. Last year, they wound up their nuclear business NuGen in the UK after failing to find a buyer for it. Consumer demand for laptops has soared in the last few months because of the coronavirus pandemic and global lockdowns, but overall the market for personal computers has been tough for quite a while. Analyst Marina Kocheva from the firm CCS Insight says, only those who have managed to sustain scale and price like Lenovo or have a premium brand like Apple have succeeded in the unforgiving PC market where volumes have been falling for years. The results of a major exploration mission showed Monday that the dwarf planet Ceres, long believed to be a barren space rock, is an ocean world with reservoirs of seawater beneath its surface. Maria Cristina, Cristina de Santi from the National Institute for Astrophysics in Italy says of the discovery, I'm extremely excited to find some evidence of liquid water, together with the fact that this body has a lot of minerals, very interesting for the formation of life. It's a good combination of chemical compounds that help in forming biological molecules. De Sancti and her colleagues analyzed high-resolution images in Sarah's, of Sarah's taken by the Dawn spacecraft, which orbited the dwarf planet between 2015 and 2018 before it ran out of fuel. In its final phase, the spacecraft orbited just 35 kilometers above the surface of Ceres, focusing on the Akater crater. She and her team were able to identify salt by comparing data, including images and spectral analysis, from the Dawn spacecraft with equivalent analysis of chemicals here on Earth. Earlier observations of bright deposits on the crater had hinted at the presence of salty water underneath, but the discovery of hydrated sodium chloride provides much stronger evidence of an underground ocean. Impact fractures on the surface of the Akater crater analyzed in a separate study suggest the ocean is some 40 kilometers below the surface, although the exact size is unknown. It's pretty large, says De Sancti, adding that the presence of such a large body will certainly have influenced the geology of Ceres with water coming up from below the surface and bringing minerals with it. Ralph Jaumann of the Free University of Berlin in Germany says, the mineralogy is unique and so far not observed on other solar system bodies. 
Jawman says these findings demonstrate that even small bodies like Ceres could have water in their interior. A clever phishing scam is targeting cPanel users with a fake security advisory alerting them of critical vulnerabilities in their web hosting management panel. cPanel is administrative software commonly installed on shared web hosting services that allow website owners to easily administer their site through a graphical user interface. Starting last week, cPanel and web host manager, WHM, users began reporting a targeted phishing email campaign with an email subject of cPanel urgent update request that was pretending to be a security advisory from the company. This fake advisory stated that updates had been released to fix security concerns in cPanel and WHM software and recommends all users install the updates. In addition to a well-worded email with little or no grammar and spelling issues, the threat actors use language commonly found in security advisories. The attackers registered the domain cPanel7831.com to make the scam appear as, as an authentic advisory from cPanel and are using Amazon Simple Email Service, SES, to send out the emails. If a recipient of this phishing email falls for the scam and clicks on the Update Your cPanel and WHM installations, they were brought to a website that prompted a user to log in with their cPanel credentials. As this is a well-done and convincing scam, it would not be surprising if some users fell for the scam. If you received a similar email recently and entered your login credentials at this site, it is strongly suggested that you immediately log in to your web hosting provider and change the password on your account. You should then perform a complete audit of your site while paying extra attention to the addition of strange PHP files that can be used as backdoors. Also be sure to examine the website's uh, .ht access file for changes that automatically inject malicious code into every web page or redirect visitors. That's an interesting story because for a lot of people who don't have a lot of background knowledge in web development, to be able to go to a DIY web hosting service where you could build your own website with your own cPanel, it seems like such an easy thing. But yeah. most people wouldn't have that tech knowledge to recognize a phishing scam when it came to the cPanel. Sure. And, and I mean, some of the stuff that they get access to, if you give them the login credentials, can really cause problems. Yeah, like if they have Linux access. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. certainly, I mean, the, any like cheap hosting solution is going to have some kind of a a portal, whether it's cPanel or otherwise, yep. but you think about cPanel and, and as you say, a novice user signing up for the $5 hosting account, not really up on the latest security trends yeah. could be dangerous. Same thing we see with WordPress. Like, oh, exactly. You get a Same. WordPress site because you think it's easy to set up and administer yourself, but you don't realize necessarily, I am generalizing, but maybe you don't realize that that leads to major security impl implications if you are not on the up and up. It's and true. Is super careful. So for somebody who's sitting there going, uh, I do my own website. I mm -hmm. just happened to update my security. Oh, C panel. I just <laughs> gave my login to these hackers. Like what? I, I know that, you know, Becca covered in the story, you know, yeah. checking some certain things, but what are some, I think, well, she hit on the, the first thing I would do is check for any recently modified files. And on a Linux server, right. it's really easy because you can do a find dash M time and, and sort by the time uh, that the file was last modified. Okay. And so you can see any file that was modified in the last 10 days. And if you don't, you know, if you uploaded your site six months ago, you know that, hey, those files are suspect. So you That's can look right. at them. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's not like a virus. It's not like you can no. run a virus scan and, and find the malware. No, it's like it perfectly legit tools that they're using to allow them to con command and control your website. Yep. Or even going so far, using the WordPress example, of creating users. Mm -hmm. cPanel, same thing. Maybe they create users. Maybe they add uh, an SMTP account so they can use your mail server for sending spam. That's right. That's a big one. Yeah. So if somebody doesn't have the tech knowledge to go in, take a look at their account, what's another way that they could deal with that? Go through the hosting provider and say, hey, can you check my account? Jeff, if you, if you really have that low of a knowledge when it comes to that kind of thing, you shouldn't, you, you shouldn't be doing yourself hosting. Right. Yeah. 
Realistically, if yeah, you're oh, for sure. if you're not familiar with terms like FTP, SFTP, and what the difference between those two things is, SSH, SSL, SMTP, POP3, IMAP, mm -hmm. if you don't know what any one of those terms are, MySQL, MariaDB. If right. you don't know what any of those words mean, then self-hosting is not for you. That's right. Um, again, I'm being general, but that's those are red flags for me and and you don't want to find yourself in a situation where yes i'm saving money on hosting but i part of that is that you are relinquishing the desire to pay someone to maintain that's right and putting that all on you yeah. so it works great if you're knowledgeable and you're getting the five dollar a month hosting account or whatever right as an example because you're able to do that maintenance yourself. But this is where church websites become illicit websites. Yes. And yep. other business websites become defaced and data theft occurs. And some companies are, you know, irreparably uh, have their reputation damaged yes. because of these things. Um, well, and also if you have a website where you're doing any monetary payments, you know, if you're, if you're receiving big, customer yeah. payments, like, that's even, that's a whole other can of worms you're getting into there, Jeff. Well, yeah, but you've got to be careful for that kind of stuff. So please, 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 number one, change your password. Just like Becca said. Mm -hmm. Number two, start going through the files on your server to make sure something hasn't changed. If you haven't logged into your cPanel for a uh, security update, chances are you're probably not hit by this. But if you did, you need to start doing some checking. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So good advice. Good advice. Yeah. We've got more coming up. A teenager has spent nearly twenty thousand oh. dollars in Twitch donations on their mother's debit card. <laughs> and Google is creating a worldwide Android phone powered earthquake alert system. Becca has these stories coming up. Plus, Robert is here with the Crypto Corner. So don't go anywhere. of cryptos and welcome to the crypto corner now it has been an interesting week hasn't it let's take a look at it if we look at CoinGecko, which is my current favorite uh, directory then we see that the market cap has increased since we spoke last time to 364 billion with a small decrease at the moment of 2.7 percent which is normal nothing unusual there uh, if we look at the top coins also nothing unusual here well we've got chain link with minus eight percent but it had an increase of already 40% in the last seven days. And as always, we sold by those seven days and then the picture changes significantly. Normally, we have got around 15 to 20 coins that achieve more than 15%. This time, we've got over 50 coins that achieve more than 15%. And I guess that one or the other of you is uh, contemplating in investing in cryptos now. And there, I'd like to just... Uh, Give you some recommendations the first is if somebody recommends something to you just be very careful because um, not everybody has got your best interest uh, in mind and um, and you can do the same research they are doing so let's take a look at here band protocol that's an oracle like chain link if i click on this one here i'm just showing you how this this system works then we have got here the current price uh, here's the website. So if you click on this here, you, it will be redirected. You will be redirected to the website, medium.com. That's publications. Uh, Etherscan. This is an ERC20 coin, so based on Ethereum. Um, then you've got the Red, uh, Reddit, Twitter, Telegram. So that's whether you see the community talking about this coin. And if we scroll a little bit further down, then we have got the numbers of this coin. So. Um, in the last 30 days, band increased by 600%. Um, currently, we've got a retracement of 23%. Uh, also, I would say this is normal here. And if you're interested in buying something, then there's some interesting numbers. Like, for example, <clears throat> what was the all-time uh, high? It was $17. So that's uh, uh, one day ago. As you can see here, one day ago, we achieved all-time high here. And the all-time low, which was November 25th on 2019, so nine months ago, it increased uh, 6,399% from that day. 
So that's interesting statistics. So probably I would not invest in something that just had its all-time high because I assume that short-term there will be no significant growth in it. If you're interested in any way buying, then you click here on Markets. In Markets, you have got all those exchanges listed that are that are trading where you can trade a uh, band. So on Binance, you have got two or three possibilities. One band with USDT, with Tether, with Bitcoin, and with the Binance coin. Here you see the price. So of course, they will be all uh, more or less the same. And then you've got the depth. The depth means how far can you go before there is a significant impact on the price? Yeah, so if I go, for example, into Hotbit, no idea what type of uh, exchange it is, and I want to buy for $1,000, then I will get significantly a uh, higher price than those $13.13. Whereby if I've got $1,000 to invest in Binance, with Binance, then it will have no effect. Oh, this is the price I will get. So this is how you read the mi plus 2% and the minus 2%. It's, uh, it's an interesting number if you want to invest in coins because some of those coins that people are recommending as the next big thing have got absolutely no liquidity. And then it's difficult to buy something and it's very difficult to sell also something. Yeah, <clears throat> and um, and once you have bought something, I, my recommendation is always not your keys, not your coins. So um, I, the recommendation is, as always, to put it either on a, on a ledger, which is this year, or on a treasure, which is this year. <coughs> Um, because that's uh, currently the state of art in regards to the security of, of cryptos. Um, if you're planning to buy one of those, then go only to the original website um, and buy it there. Don't buy it on Amazon because you can... I heard uh, sometimes uh, some of those uh, hardware wallets have been compromised. So always go to the original. It takes you probably four weeks or three weeks longer to receive that device, but I think that investment is a very important and very good investment. Otherwise, be very careful in where you're investing. Uh, do your research. Uh, don't trust, I mean, listen to what experts have to say, whether they recommend band or chain link or whatever they recommend, but then do your own research. I showed you how to do that. So you go into every website and uh, see where you want to put your money there. And last but not least, also be very careful with exchanges because they're exchanges that are dangerous. So, I mean, Binance, uh, Coinbase, and so they are here from the Western world. You can more or less trust them, although I would never keep, I said, never keep any coins on those exchanges. Um, but, um, but you never know if you have to do KYC. In other words, you have to give your passport picture or driving license, address, telephone number to these exchanges. You don't know what they're doing with that. Like in the case of Coinbase, they said that they're going to sell your data. So I don't know if that's in your interest. Anyway, that's it from me today. So I hope uh, you enjoyed, you learned something. I wish you a fantastic week and I really hope we'll be uh, seeing each other next week again. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you, Robert. And just a reminder that we're not providing financial advice, but only sharing what's happening in the crypto cryptocurrency market. Always remember that cryptocurrency markets are ever-changing and always volatile, so sh you should only spend what you can afford to lose. I don't, li I don't like it when Robert says things that make me scared. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, I, I gave my driver's license to Coinbase. Should I be worried now? Robert, comments? Oh, I don't know. While we're thinking about that, we're going to throw back to Becca in the newsroom. Thank you, Robbie. A teenage Twitch viewer sent $19,870 USD to several streamers using his mother's debit card over the course of two weeks. The teen's mother found the charges toward the card between June 14th to June 30th, uh, claiming years of savings were taken from her account over the two-week period. She says these donations went to popular streamers on the platform. The mother, who has decided to remain anonymous to protect her family, says that nearly all the money she lost has been credited back to her account. After struggling to contact anyone at Twitch to discuss the issue, the woman successfully received a refund from the streaming site's paying service, Zola. Using the company's online chat feature, she got adjusted credits on nearly all uh, transactions, but in exchange was told the account is permanently blocked to prevent future unauthorized charges. 
Before contacting Sola, however, she attempted to communicate with Amazon and even resorted to sending a registered letter to Twitch CEO Emmett Shearer. When all else failed, she tried contacting her bank, but they could only provide further assistance if she was willing to press charges against her son. She found out about Sola by, discovery, by discovering other parents online who also had found success in similar situations. Although she was able to receive most of her money, she said hitting a brick wall with Twitch was the most frustrating thing of all. The fact that no one would respond and there was no way to speak with anyone was horrible, she said. That was probably the worst. The son is remorseful, according to the mother, and is going to counseling. He's also been limited to one hour of monitored daily playtime, with a stipulation that he must do positive activities throughout the day, get exercise, and interact with the family in a positive manner. You know, as a father of young kids that are very engrossed in YouTubers and yeah, yeah, yeah. all that kind of stuff, this story makes me go, who <laughs> am I glad <laughs> I'm not giving my kids my debit card? <laughs> when I first got an Amazon Fire TV stick, uh, I made the mistake of not setting a pin. Oh, no. And, of course, you're logged into your, um, your Amazon account. Yeah. So um, I was at work, and suddenly my phone started blowing up. I'm like, what is going on? So finally, I pulled out my phone because I'm getting all these notifications one after another after another. And I look at my phone and I'm seeing Amazon charges one after another after oh, another no. to the tune of $450. Oh. Now, nothing like $20,000. But, but so still. this was a case where my son was playing a video game. Yep. And he determined that if he put 0000, zero, zero, zero as the pin, because that was the default, yep. that he could buy anything in the game. Not realizing it was, not realizing it was actually oh, off my no. credit card. So did you yeah. get it refunded? I did. Amazon is fantastic That's for, good. for that kind of thing. So they reversed it and, and no problem whatsoever. But I can just, I can feel that stress that this woman yeah. must have been going through to realize $20,000 gone from my debit card. And, and that makes me think, like, is this a failure in our electronic system right now? I mean, I think this about TAP right. and how three, four years ago at the Toronto Santa Claus Parade, somebody had a, a TAP receiver attached to their phone. You know how you can get yep. these devices. Yep. And they went through the parade and they stole $20 at a time just by... Yes. Approaching people's pockets. Yes. And, and so walked away with thousands and thousands of dollars. And bef I don't even know. I never heard if they ever got caught. Oh, I'm sure they would have. Everything's they, traceable. They, yeah. So, it, But it just makes me think about debit cards, how they have the Visa logo now. Yes. And so like that has happened to my wife. Yikes. Um, she had a, a visa debit Yeah, and remember uh, when debit was the safe card, right? I, <laughs> I remember that. I, I want to say it was maybe two years ago. Yeah. Um, she went to use her debit card and she couldn't use it. Oh, and no. she's like, what's going on? Oh no. Went online and found out that her account was locked mm -hmm. for suspicious activity. So she okay, looked in. So at least they're doing that. Right. Yeah. So she, so she looked into it and over the course of three days, there was hundreds of dollars in food purchases from all over California using okay. uh, the visa debit function. So somehow somebody had gotten her mm. visa yeah. debit information yep. and was making food purchases. And so because like, because it operates just like a visa. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And so it was no big deal to do like 20 bucks to this pizza joint, yeah. you know, 30 bucks to this restaurant. And so whoever it was, was doing it. Now, thankfully she got all of her money back. It all Good. got, uh, you know, returned. Yeah. But I mean, in the case of this story, so, I mean, there's a couple things here. One is, how did the kid get the debit card or, or oh, was it how? just registered to the, yeah, just to the grab account? it anyway. from mom's wallet right. and, and it's, but second, you'd think the bank accounts, most debits have a daily limit of a thousand dollars. True. And so if okay. he dropped 20 grand over a two week period, either she had a higher daily limit or there was no limit on it. I'm thinking mama has $20,000 in the bank. She probably has a higher limit than I do. Well, that's probably true. I don't think I've ever <laughs> had $20,000. <laughs> Not all at once. Maybe just before my mortgage payment came out, just after the right. put the money in. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh... <laughs> but the other thing is the fact that 
you know, there are kids that are out there that are going, I want to donate to my favorite person. And I mean, right. my kids are always talking about their favorite YouTubers and, uh, you know, our son with his Chromebook, mm -hmm. like I, you know, I have an email for him cause he's at the age he can have an email now. And so I have the, you know, master login for his email and every once in a while I'll just right. check up okay. on what he's doing exactly. and I'm finding, oh, he's commenting on different YouTubers right. yeah. and I'm going, okay, I need to have a conversation with him about internet awareness and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm now very aware of what is linked up to that account. Mm -hmm. Could he purchase this kind of stuff? And so you have to think very security conscious as a parent, if you're going to start handing online accounts to your kids. That's a tough, tough situation. Now my, my producer is, is giving us the look that we need to move on, Sorry, but I'm a blabber. as a final thought on this particular story, as a content creator on platforms like YouTube, uh, a, a Twitch creator who, you know, it, that's, that's the biggest like fear and burn. And, and even I'll be honest with you. And, and some of you may or may not know this, but even having had such a successful Kickstarter campaign right up until the moment that the money's in the bank, you're, you're on the edge of your seat as a content creator thinking, what if they back down? Right. What if, uh, you know, I've, I've basically budgeted these funds that have been donated. What if they retroacted that that would be a real bad situation for me as a content creator so to these content creators who received that twenty thousand dollars from this child from this teenager and then had it reversed where did that leave them like that's such yeah. a, a hard situation so we need to be there need to be things put in place to protect those content creators the kids the parents sure. Um, there need to be, you know, I hate to say regulations, that's not what I'm talking about, but, right. but maybe Twitch is irresponsible. Maybe they're partly to blame for this. Maybe there's something that needs to be said about that. I, and that's all I'm doing happen. is just opening the, that box and just letting you dive in to comment below. Right. What are your thoughts? And we're going to throw right back to Becca. Google is creating a worldwide Android phone-powered earthquake alert system. The first part of that system rolled out Tuesday. If you opt in, the acceler uh, accelerometer in your Android phone will become one data point for an algorithm designed to detect earthquakes. Eventually, that system will automatically send warnings to people who could be impacted. It's a feature made possible through Google's strengths. The staggering numbers of Android phones around the world and clever, clever use of algorithms on big data. As with its collaboration with Apple on exposure tracing and other Android features like car crash detection and emergency location services, it shows that there are untapped ways that smartphones could be used for something important to the community at large. Google is rolling out the system in small stages. First. Google is partnering with the United States Geo Geological Survey and the California Office of Emergency Services to send the agency's earthquake alerts to Android users in that state. Those alerts are generated by already existing Shake Alert system, which uses data generated by traditional seismometers. Mark Stogatis, principal Android software engineer at Google, says, it'd be great if there were just uh, seismometer-based systems everywhere that could detect earthquakes. That's not really practical, and it's unlikely to have global coverage because seismometers are extremely expensive. They have to be constantly maintained. You need a lot of them in an area to really have a good earthquake uh, early warning system. So the second and third stages of Google's plan will be powered instead by the Android phones. The company is proceeding fairly cautiously though. In the second stage, Google will show localized results in Google searches for earthquakes based on the data it's detecting from Android phones. The idea there is that when you feel an earthquake, you'll go to Google to see if that's what you felt or not. An Android phone can become a mini seismometer because it's an, acceler uh, an accelerometer, that the thing that detects if you've rotated it or not. Android system uses the data from that sensor to see if the phone is shaking. It is only on when an Android phone is plugged in and not in use to preserve battery life. Once it has more confidence in the accuracy of the system, Google will begin actively sending out earthquake warnings to people who live in areas where there are not seismometer-based warning systems. Over the long term, Google hopes to create an API based on its earthquake detection system. It doesn't plan on using the system on iPhones, but if the API comes out, then Apple would be free to use it. 
More interesting, though, is what other systems would benefit from an earthquake detection API. For example, somebody could build something that automatically stops an elevator at the next floor and opens the door so that people can get out before the wave comes. And you can turn off gas valves automatically. You can have something that stops medical procedures or open the door to fire stations ahead of time. That's a common problem in earthquakes where fires are a big deal and firefighters often just can't get out. So you can build something that does that. Airplanes can stop landing as they're doing this, abort their landing. Trains can be slowed down. There's an entire ecosystem that can be enabled by using this Android-based detection and having it published server-side so that others can plug into it. Google's plan is to minimize false positives and tune the system right away, and users near earthquake fault zones will soon see info in Google searches and the inevitable rollout of local notifications. It wasn't long ago, Jeff, that Simon Weckert, a uh, Berlin-based artist, um, took 99 Android smartphones, put them in a yes. red wagon, and walked down the main street that was completely devoid of vehicles. That's and right. yet, Google's Maps service showed that there were traffic jams everywhere he went. Right. Because there's 99 Android phones. So, you know, I hate to put the thought in people's heads, but this is the thing with an Android-based system such as this. While it sounds amazing, while it sounds like, hey, this is a very brilliant idea, how hard is it to take a Raspberry Pi Zero and a motor and connect it to one centralized server and share the diagrams of that online and say, okay, everybody, I want you to, to build this, take a Raspberry Pi, plug it into this motor, put your phone in this motor when you go to bed. And because it's internet connected, they can make it, they can set off all the phones vibrating like this in any area of the world where they have these devices. It'd be so easy. Yeah. It'd just be, it's such an easy hack. So it's like, uh, you, how can they trust that data? Well, I think it's exactly. brilliant. An accelerometer to, to detect earthquake. Well, well, and that's the thing. Like, this is a, an amazing thing that they're doing. Yeah. But with amazing ideas also comes <laughs> the amazing ability to mess with it thanks to human beings. Yeah. Uh, I mean, not only We're that. We're terrible. Like, what if you have, you know, if somebody decides to use it as a, uh, a type of social attack, so to speak, mm. where... There's a group of 15, 20 people, they all have their phones, they congregate in a particular area and they just sit there and start shaking their phone. And if they all start going to off, synchronize it with with like Raspberry Pis <laughs> through the internet. Like right. you could actually like pick a spot and make an earthquake on Google Maps because you know it's yeah. just it, so it, it'll be interesting to see if that's I'm gonna watch this me I'm exercising. Oh really? <laughs> like you got this. steps just there. <laughs> nice. I got steps. This is great. <laughs> Brilliant. So. Just quickly before Becca wraps things up, uh, Robert K. Uh, Robert Koenig from the Crypto Corner says, "Hey, with Coinbase, Robbie, you should be okay. They are selling your data to the government, though." And he okay. says, "I don't that, trust." That's because they're centralized. I yeah uh, yeah, and I just like can I assume that the government knows everything about me, anyways? But probably, yes. but would I mean, that the be government tax, issued my. Would that be like IRS tax purposes? Yeah, I suppose so. But yeah. I mean, what, selling my info to the government. So I don't hold my crypto in uh, in a centralized um, exchange at all. However, I do use the exchange to transfer funds between right. U.S. dollars and, and Bitcoin, for example. Yeah. So. Um, uh, SadSack963 makes a really good comment about the debit card issue and, ha and, and a child being able to use mom's credit card and says, what if the uh, or debit card, what if these debit cards had 2FA? Oh, Wouldn't phenomenal. that be superb? So what if there was 2FA on your debit card that somehow, you, you know, whether you pull out a, a, an authenticator token or, or the authenticator app on your phone, whatever it is that you need to do use to be able to yeah i think that's very very smart so thanks for submitting that uh becca big thanks to roy w nash and our community of viewers for submitting stories to us this week thanks for watching the category 5.tv newsroom don't forget to like and subscribe for all your tech news with a slight linux bias and if you appreciate what we do become a patron at patreon.com category 5. from the category 5.tv newsroom i'm becca ferguson